Tonight, the Manhattan district attorney who indicted former President Trump is now suing Republican Congressman Jim Jordan. Our chief congressional correspondent, Manu Raju, is up on Capitol Hill for us. Manu, walk us through this lawsuit and how Congressman Jordan is now responding. Yeah, Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan district attorney, filing this lawsuit in federal district court seeking to prevent Jim Jordan's investigation into Bragg from going forward. Of course, Bragg brought forward the case against Donald Trump that led Trump to become the first former president to be indicted on criminal charges stemming from that hush money investigation involving the former adult film actress Stormy Daniels, an accusation that he falsified business records to try to help his political career in 2016. What Bragg is alleging in this lawsuit is that Jordan, in his words, is trying is using a transparent campaign to intimidate and attack him. At issue, a subpoena that Jordan issued last week for a former district att former attorney in his office, Mark Pomerantz. So Bragg is trying to block that subpoena, block the efforts to get Pomerantz to come testify, and for those documents that Jordan has demanded. They say this in this lawsuit. Congress lacks any valid legislative purpose to engage in a free-ranging campaign of harassment and retaliation for the district attorney's investigation and prosecution of Mr. Trump under the laws of New York. That, com that campaign is a direct threat to federalism and the sovereign interests of the state of New York. The court should enjoin the subpoena and put an end to this constitutionally destructive fishing expedition. Now, Jim Jordan pushing back in a tweet saying, first they indict a president for no crime, then they sue to block con congressional oversight. When we ask about the federal funds they say they used to do it, that were worth about $5,000 in funds that Bragg's office says were used for a different Trump investigation. But Jordan's still pushing ahead and plans to have a field hearing in Manhattan next week to try to discredit Bragg and his record prosecuting crime in New York. All right, Manu Raju up on Capitol Hill watching all of this. Thank you very much. Let's get some analysis right now from our legal and political experts. Laura Coates, how strong is uh, Bragg's case here? <laughs> In this indictment and a lot oh, of hold on a second hold on a second uh i don't know if you, I, I i wasn't hearing you laura are you hearing me okay i am hearing you are you able all right to hear me? yeah now i hear you go Thank ahead you. start you again know. how strong is bragg's case here it is quite strong given the fact that of course okay. it's, it's never been happening government before government. where you've got it's a awesome member of congress and the federal government trying to exactly. usurp the role of a state level prosecutor. It's about staying in one's lane. And remember, Sorry, it was yeah, a grand yeah, jury yeah. that indicted yeah. this particular individual, a grand yeah. jury, not a politically motivated or an elected official as he is accused of being. That makes a world of difference here. And so what you have now is an intention to try to undermine the process that needs to play out in any criminal proceeding and instead use congressional weight to try to influence perhaps what might take place here. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Adam Kinzinger, Congressman Jordan is your former colleague. Uh, how hard will he and other House Republicans fight all this? Well, he'll fight as hard as he can as long as he's raising money. And it's all about raising money. It's about showing the base you're fighting. So if he stops, you know, being able to raise money on this, he'll probably stop fighting. But my guess is among the base, among the people that, you know, they continually go to and milk every dollar that they make from them on this, you know, political move that they're actually doing, Jim Jordan, uh, then he'll keep doing it. But I, I think he's completely wrong to continue to go after a uh, prosecutor on this, Alvin Bragg. We believed as Republicans in state rights, states' rights until about five minutes ago when it became inconvenient. And Donald Trump isn't anything but a employee of the federal government. And being an employee of the federal government or a former employee of the federal government does not indemnify you against any case brought by a state court. Gloria Borger, how much is this uh, congressional effort to investigate Bragg, uh, led by these Republicans, actually about de defending former President Trump? Oh, it's all about defending uh, former President Trump. And I'm old enough to remember when Congressman Jordan was subpoenaed to appear before the January 6th committee, which Adam Kinzinger, of course, was a part of. And what did Jordan himself do? He challenged the constitutionality of that subpoena before a congressional committee. He did not appear. And now he is the one subpoenaing Mark uh, Pomerantz here. And so, you know, it's kind of ironic to me that he would say, oh, yeah, we have the right to subpoena uh, Mark Pomerantz, but he himself 
did not appear before the January 6th committee. You know, Adam, Gloria makes a very solid point here. What incentive does Bragg have to comply with House Republicans now that the shoe's on the other foot? Well, I don't think he has any. I don't think he has any incentive. And, and I said this during the whole, uh, you know, the committee hearing is like, look, you guys want to be in the majority. You're yeah. going to be in the majority more than likely. Now they are. And now you think you have the right to subpoena people when you said that Congress didn't have the right to subpoena you. It is kind of the shoes on the other foot. And yeah. frankly, turnabout's fair play. I hope we can get back to a functional Congress, but we're not there right now. Laura, how will this fight fit into the bigger picture of Bragg's ongoing case against Trump? This is so crucial. I mean, first of all, grand jury proceedings are supposed to be secret. And so until there is actually a trial where any grand jury related testimony or evidence that ought to come in under a judicial order and permission, we have a long way to go until that point. So the idea of using the court of public opinion through whatever hearing Jordan is anticipating, rather than waiting for the process to unfold, and I, I remind everyone, there was a reason we wait for the court of law. There are judicial protections. There is evidentiary protections that are in place there that you want to have in place as much to protect the defendant as for the United States government or the state government as well. And so if you have everything unfold at the whim of a politician as opposed to at the behest of a jury, you will have the subversion of due process of the law. All right, guys. Thank you very, very much.